Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look! Up in the sky! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! Yes, it's Superman, strange visitor from another world who came to Earth with powers and abilities far beyond those of mortal men. Superman, who can change the course of mighty rivers, bend steel in his bare hands, and who, disguised as Clark Kent, mild-mannered reporter for a great metropolitan newspaper, fights a never-ending battle for truth, justice, and the American way. But before we join Superman, here is an important message. Yes, fellows and girls, here is an important message for you. A message direct from our fighting marines in the Solomon Islands, echoed by our blue jackets on the high seas, by the boys who wear our army and navy wings, our troops in Africa, our commandos in England. In fact, by every man in the American armed forces, no matter where he may be. And here's the message. We're going to win this war, they say. We're going to wipe Hitlerism and fascism off the face of this earth. We've taken on the job and we're going to see it through, but we can't do it alone. We can't do it without the help of every boy and girl and every man and woman back home. Now, we know the one way we can help those boys fight this war to a victorious finish is to see that they get all the guns and tanks and ships and planes they need. But those things require a lot of money, and that's where you and I come in. We help our government to buy those war materials by lending them our money, by buying all the war stamps we possibly can. Why, right at this moment, there are American fighting men on the new front, and they're equipped with guns and tanks and protected by planes and ships that you help to buy. That is, if you've been buying war-saving stamps regularly. So let's make a promise to ourselves right now. Let's promise to buy war-saving stamps as often as we can. Tell mother and dad about it. See if you can't get them to give you a dime a day for a war stamp, or even a dime every other day. And remember that every dime is important, because ten cents will buy five forty-five caliber bullets to be used by our soldiers, sailors, and marines. Five dimes will buy enough fuel oil to take an American destroyer one full mile closer to its objective. And a dime a day from all the fellows and girls in the United States will buy enough fast pursuit planes to blast Hitler's Luftwaffe right out of the sky. So, start right now, won't you, to do your share to help win this war. And remember this slogan, every time that you've got a dime, buy a war-saving stamp. And now, the adventures of Superman. In our last episode, you remember how Editor Perry White of the Daily Planet telephoned Clark Kent and told him to come right down to the office. As Kent hung up the phone, we heard him say something about a forgotten world and prehistoric creatures. Well, to find out what it's all about, let's join Kent now as he reaches the office of Editor White. Listen. Hi, Chief. Mm, Hello, Kent. Mm, Kent, I'm afraid I've gone and done it again. It's taken him years, but he's convinced me at last. He's a crackpot, an eccentric, an idiot in some ways, but he's convinced me. Uh, who's convinced you of what? Uh, you've heard of Dr. Leander Cameron, haven't you? Yes. What about him? And you've heard about his theories of the lost continent of Atlantis, that he believes still exists somewhere at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean. Chief, you haven't. Yes. Yes, Kent, I have. Oh, no, Chief. Now, Kent, I... Hello, everybody. Hello, Lois. Good uh, to see you again. That's right. You have been a stranger. <laughs> Good work on that scoop clock. Nice. Who helped you? No one. I did it all with my little typewriter. Will you two stop fencing with each other? We've got serious things to think of. Serious? Lois, our good friend, Editor Perry White of the Daily Planet, has gone and done it again. What do you mean? You tell her, Chief. I can't. Well, Lois, uh, Dr. Leander Cameron, the celebrated ichthyologist and deep sea diver. Mm, celebrated crackpot, you mean. Uh-huh. Now, Lois, I resent that. All right, all right. Who, what about Dr. Cameron? Well, you know, he's been after me for years to finance an uh, undersea expedition. To find the lost continent of Atlantis. Yes? Well, I, uh... <coughs> I, uh... Mr. Uh, Weiss, you didn't. Yes. Yes, I did. Oh, no! Now, don't you start! His arguments are perfectly logical. Can I come in? May I come in? Uh, yeah, may I come in? Come in, Jim. All right. Something wrong, Mr. Weiss? What do you mean? Well, that look on your face. You look kind of... Yes, 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 out with it, out with it. Well, you look kind of silly. What did you say? He feels kind of silly, Jim. You see, he's just decided to finance another expedition. Gee, that sounds swell. Uh, An expedition to find the lost continent of Atlantis. Well, gee... An expedition to be headed by Dr. Leander Cameron. Oh, no. What? Well, 
What have you got to say about it, you you office boy? Sir, I'm a reporter now. What? Uh, he is, Chief, he is. In a sense, at any rate. You remember I tried to trick the Jap saboteurs into believing they had the wrong formula? Well, Jim was the one who phoned in that story, and he did a swell job on it, too. Well, thanks, Mr. Kent. Mm, yes, yes, he did do a good job. Matter of fact, I'm going to try him out on the story today. You are, Chief. You are. Yes, yes, Jim, and a very important job, too. If you succeed at it, well, there's no telling what heights you may reach as a reporter. Oh, gosh. Well, what's the story? Well, the Tiny Tots Kindergarten are forming a club to be called the Don't Kick Grandmother When She's Down Club. Oh. You can cover it. Oh, well, gee, I... Say, is this a gag? Yes, it's a gag. And it's meant to give you a rough idea of what I think of you as a reporter. Now, wait well, a minute, Chief. Wait a minute. After the job Jimmy's done, I don't think... It's... You're not paid to think about anything about your job. Yes, yes, what is it? Huh? What? Oh, 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 send him in. Well, he's here. Who's here? Dr. Cameron. Oh. Now, get this straight. Get this straight, all of you. I've promised to finance this expedition of his, and I'm not such a fool as I look. Well. Uh, what? Oh, well, well. You all think it's silly. Well, so will everyone else. And they'll follow the story in the Daily Planet just for laughs, if nothing more. Hey, yeah, you've got something there. No, well, thanks. And if Dr. Cameron turns out to be correct... He won't. Don't be too sure. Dr. Leander Cameron, sir. Uh, Leander, come in, come hey, in. My dear friend. Oh. Uh, I think I must have fallen. I think you must have collapsed. No, I fell. My butterfly net caught on the knob of the door. Wow. <laughs> Just look at that pile of junk. Well, Leander, oh. I really don't know why you carry all that paraphernalia with you. What in the world do you need with a fire extinguisher? Here, let me help you pick this stuff up. Oh, thank you, sir. Laugh if you will, Terry, but my motto, like that of the Boy Scouts of America, is be prepared. Should there occur an unexpected fire, I'm ready for it. In this knapsack hanging over my left shoulder, I carry a kit of cool tools, wrenches, hammers, screwdrivers, etc. You never know when something may need fixing in a hurry. In this knapsack over my right shoulder, I carry medicines, aspirin, epicac, quinine, etc. Who knows, but that some loved one may fall sick. Uh, yes, but why the pots and pans and cooking utensils? Those I carry to keep myself fit for the trail. My work, as you must know, has led me into many strange parts of the world, places where stamina, the strength to carry on under great loads, is vital. Be prepared. That's my motto. There's nothing you could ask for that I do not carry on the person. Uh, how about an ice cream soda, Doctor? Jimmy. Why not? I believe I have a small bottle of carbonated water somewhere, and I'm certainly capable of whipping together some ice cream with the chemicals I carry. Uh... What flavor? Are you kidding? Gosh, I didn't think it could be done. It can and shall be done. And while I'm concocting a delicious effervescent drink for the young man, perhaps, Perry, we can get down to the business at hand. Huh? What? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Why not? Uh, Mr. Kent and Miss Lane are to go along on the expedition. They are. Excellent. No doubt they've already informed you it is this silly venture. Mm, well, uh, yes, they have. Well, now, really, Dr. Cameron, the idea of a lost continent existing at the bottom of the Atlantic... Uh, a world filled with mammoth fish, sea serpents, and what have you. Well, it is just fantastic. To the untutored, unscientific mind, such as your own, yes, but not to mine. Uh, shall we make it a vanilla soda, Jimmy? I find I have some vanilla beans in the pack. Uh, yeah, you yeah, sure. Uh, what did I do with that folding cup? Oh, oh yes, here it is. Uh, Mr. Kent? Miss Lane, what do you know of the lost continent of Atlantis? Well, very little, Doctor, except that it's a huge continent that once existed but is now at the bottom of the sea. Then let me explain it to you. Atlantis is a so-called legendary island that was situated in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. Atlantis had been a powerful kingdom 9,000 years before the birth of Solon. It is believed, or was believed, I should say, that due to sudden and catastrophic natural causes, the island one day sank into the sea, disappearing from view for the rest of time until the present day. Gee, that's interesting. I will not enter into the various scientific undersea explorations that have led me to believe that the continent of Atlantis actually exists, for you would never understand them. Oh. But it does. Of that I'm sure. And I want a chance to prove it. Not mind you for any gain that may accrue to myself, but for the sake of a wondrous idea that I have conceived that will change our modern conception of undersea warfare. Undersea warfare? What do you mean? Mr. Kent, think what it would mean to have a base at the bottom of the ocean for submarines. What? 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 Ah, the plan may sound fantastic at first, but I have planned everything very carefully. Hundreds of submarines could be based there, serviced and refueled, and kept in perfect operating condition. Oh, uh, let me see. Let me see. Oh, 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 oh yes, uh, vanilla flavoring. Yes, yes. Now, uh, 
Now then, let me see. Well, I... Oh, yes. I propose then, with the aid of Perry's money, to find this sunken continent. Yes, all right. Now, 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 just, just a minute, Doctor. Just a minute. How will you do it? After all, we are at war now, you know. Yes. Yes, yes. The Atlantic is a sort of, uh, uh, shall we say, no man's land. No man's land. Yes, no yes. man's land. Now, will we be permitted to take an expedition out into it? And, and suppose we do. This lost continent of Atlantis must lie at, at, at such a terrific depth that it, you'd, well, you'd never be able to reach it. I will answer your questions one at a time. First, it is exactly because we are at war, exactly because the submarine base of which I speak would be so helpful that we shall have no difficulty in securing permission to take an expedition into the Atlantic. In fact, I have already secured the necessary permission. Uh-huh. As to the depth to which this lost continent lies, that too I've taken care of. Oh, let me see. Where is that carbonated water? Oh, oh here it is. Gosh, looks just like a vanilla ice cream soda. Looks like a vanilla ice cream soda? It is a vanilla soda. I have, of course, used dry ice for freezing the ice cream. Oh, here, my boy. See if it's to your taste. Oh, thanks. Hey, it's swell. Well, well, wonders never see. Uh, tell me, Dr. Cameron, how do you expect to overcome the obstacle of depth? How will you manage to get down that deep into the Atlantic? A simple matter. Simple Dr. Matter. Leander Cameron's multi-depth submarine and bathysphere will take care of that. What? Uh, your what? My multi-depth submarine and bathysphere. It's anchored in the harbor now. Would you care to see it? We can get down there in 15 minutes for taxi. Well, what do you say? Shall we go down and see it? Oh, sure. You bet. All right, then I'll get my coat. Well, what about it, Kent? Uh, Shall we go with Dr. Cameron on his undersea expedition, huh? What? You have the nerve to go, Clark. I guess I have. It's too exciting to miss. Oh. Dr. Cameron may be right, and to think of seeing with my own eyes a continent that existed over 9,000 years ago. Why, it's just wonderful. An undersea expedition. It's thrilling, isn't it? Yeah, 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 it is. It, it certainly is. And, uh, well, I'm game to try it. Right. Then I take it, Perry, we can consider the matter closed. Yes, Doctor. Yes, you can. We shall all leave in a day or two in my multi-depth submarine and bathysphere in search of the lost continent of Atlantis. Well, this does sound exciting, doesn't it? Think of going in search of a lost continent that lies at the bottom of the ocean. And think of going on such a trip with such a strange character as Dr. Leander Cameron. Looks like there are plenty of thrills in store for us, so be sure to tune in tomorrow and every day, Monday through Friday, same time, same station. Tune in and follow The Adventures of Superman. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look! Up in the sky! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! Yes, it's Superman, strange visitor from another world who came to Earth with powers and abilities far beyond those of mortal men. Superman, who can change the course of mighty rivers, bend steel in his bare hands, and who, disguised as Clark Kent, mild-mannered reporter for a great metropolitan newspaper, fights a never-ending battle for truth, justice, and the American way. And now, the adventures of Superman. A great adventure is in store for all our friends. In our last episode, we heard how editor Perry White had decided to finance an expedition in search of the lost continent of Atlantis, believed to be lying below the surface of the Atlantic Ocean. As we take up our story today, the time is several days later. The place, a private stretch of beach some short distance outside Metropolis. The cold, heavy mist of early dawn hangs low over the water. And through it, we can just make out the long gray lines of a submarine lying offshore. Standing on the beach, dimly seen through the gray smoke of dawn, stand four people. Clark Kent, Lois Lane, Editor Perry White, and Jimmy Olsen. Listen. Hey, look out. That surf is running pretty high up onto the beach. Yes, I just escaped getting my feet wet that time. Well, let's move up the beach a bit. Tide's coming in fast. Golly, it's cold, too. When are we going aboard the submarine? We're going to be inside that submarine for a long time once we get started. Besides, we've got to wait till Dr. Cameron arrives. Well, I can stand it if the rest of you can. It's amazing. Simply amazing. What's amazing, Lord? Well, I keep thinking it was only a few days ago that we were discussing this fantastic expedition in your office, trying to decide if we'd even go along. 
now here we are. There's Dr. Cameron's multi-depth submarine and bathosphere, or whatever you call it, waiting for us offshore. Filled with food and supplies for months. All sorts of scientific paraphernalia, everything. Well, that's Leander Cameron for you. He may look like a crackpot and act like one, but by golly, he lives up to that motto of his, be prepared. <laughs> the minute you said we'd go, he told us he'd arrange for everything. Yes. We'd have everything aboard in less than 24 hours. All he needed was the money to pay for it. Mm, I only hope it's worth the money. Even if we don't find the lost continent of Atlantis... What do you it... mean, even? You don't really expect to find it, do you? Well, I say even if we don't find it. People will read the stories in the Daily Planet just for laughs. And I don't care why they buy the paper, just so they buy it. Gosh, I wish we hadn't let that taxi go. Why? Well, we could have sat in that till a doctor got here. Well, if you really want to learn to be a reporter, Jim, you'll have to learn to take it. Yeah, I suppose Now, so. understand, young man, we don't want any trouble from you. The only reason your school principal permitted you to come along was because of the expedition's great educational value. Any monkey shines out of you, though, it's... Uh, 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 wait a minute. What's that? Someone, uh, something is coming. Judging from the racket, it's Dr. Cameron. I've never heard a man make so much noise in my life. Wait, uh, that's not Leander. It's, it's, it's something approaching on a motorcycle. It doesn't look human. Looks like some strange creature out of a nightmare. Clark, what is it? Well, it must be Dr. Cameron. I can't. It well, just can't be. I tell you, the thing riding on that motorcycle isn't human. Oh, it's human, all right. Only it's wearing a diving outfit. Cute helmet, the worst. Oh, what? Do you mean to say that's Dr. Leander Cameron arriving on a motorcycle in a diving suit? Well, now, how did you expect him to arrive? In a taxi in civilian clothes? No, oh, that'd be much too normal and ordinary for Dr. Cameron. Holy mackerel, look. He's weaving all over the beach on that thing. we better get to a safe place and we'll run down. You're right. right. He's coming straight forward. Oh, no, 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 wait. He's bearing off. Oh, boy, that was close. Close? Hey. Nothing. Look at me. I'm covered with wet sand from head to foot. Me, too. He's swinging around, heading this way. Here he comes again. Look out. Daddy, stop that thing. Stop it. Why, he can't even steer it. Doctor, it's amazing. Look out. He's going to fall. Oh, great oh. Scott, he's been killed. I know he's been killed. Oh, dear. Here, we got to get that helmet off him. I'll help. Easy, Jim, easy. Okay. Wait a minute. Help me. Oh, the poor man. Yeah, now hold on to yourself, Lord. All right, now, Jim, lift the helmet off. Okay. Sit. Good morning. Well, oh. oh, oh, good God. morning. <laughs> you made it, I see. Oh, yes, always do. Never say die. Be prepared. That's my motto. Somebody help me collect my gear and scientific paraphernalia. Leander, now, for the love of Pete, will you tell me why you're wearing a diving suit and helmet? Oh, for convenience sake, convenience sake. Convenience? Yes, you see, just as I was leaving my house to come here, I remembered I had not packed my diving outfit. One can't go on a diving expedition without a diving suit, can one? We shall need it before we're through. Uh, yes, but if you'd only... I was quiet. forced to bring it along. And since I was carrying my usual accoutrement, there was only one way to carry the suit. I wore it. Boy, you've got a reason for everything. Here we've been freezing to death waiting for you. Oh, yes, it is a cold morning, isn't it? Always cold near the water, too. A uh, cup of coffee, anyone? Well, don't tell me you've got a thermos of coffee with you. No, but what is there to prevent our making some? Well, you made a nice cream soda for Jimmy the other day, but... Now, uh, don't tell me you're going to whip together some coffee for us now. With rationing upon it? What is rationing to a scientist? A few chemicals tossed lightly together and presto, coffee, a cream of sugar. There'll be no coffee, Leander, till we go aboard and get started. The boat's waiting at the edge of the beach to take us out to the sub. Come on, now, let's go. The crew already aboard? Yeah, what there is of them, three men that are on the submarine. How do you expect to do it? The Cameron multi-depth submarine in Bathysphere is my own, Perry. Leave the running of it to all me. All right, all right, you run it. Well, golly, let's go. Wait a minute. Dr. Cameron, what are you going to do with that motorcycle? Take it aboard with me, of course. What? Well, the submarine is so full now, I'm wondering if we'll be able to come to the surface once we submerge. No room for the motorcycle. No room? No. No room? Of course there's room. I've arranged for everything. Uh -huh. A place for everything and everything in its place, I always say. Yes, and I always agree. But how are you going to get that motorcycle towed aboard the sub? I will show you. You see, I myself constructed this motorcycle. It is very light, made of plastic, you know, and it's plastic. Collapsible. It's what? The frame, collapsible, the fra frame folds together so. Then the wheels themselves telescope so, becoming an a form former size. There. Ever see a smaller package in your life? Oh, Doctor, you amaze me. You're simply astounding. I often think so myself, Miss Lane. Well, if we're ready to go aboard, you're it's in the way, says I. Send it away. Boy, I'll oh. sure be glad to get out of this cold. Let's go. Well, come on, everyone. Let's go down to that dinghy and row out to the top. Before you get started, uh... Right you are, Perry. We must lose no time in reaching the lost continent of the planet. Doctor, 
Commissioner, we've been in this multi-depth submarine of yours for eight hours, and we haven't submerged yet. We keep running on the surface. Golly, I was all excited about going beneath the surface in a submarine. Oh, rather distressing if you went below the surface without a submarine. Oh, a joke. Oh, yes. joke. Are you kidding? <laughs> Jimmy just meant that he's been looking forward to diving in a real submarine, Doctor, and so far the thrill hasn't materialized. Well, why don't we submerge, Leander? It seems to me we're using a good deal of oil for those diesels. We have sufficient for our running schedule. I do not need to say, Perry, that I shouldn't needlessly use oil in these perilous times. Oil is ammunition. However, we must save our batteries and electric motors for underwater use as much as we can. Mm, I see what you mean, Doctor. You're referring to the time when we'll be doing a good deal of diving to reach the lost continent of Atlantis. Exactly. Now, it seems to me that... Uh... Yes, Nicodemus? Excuse me, folks. Uh, Doc. I've already said yes, Nicodemus. However, I will repeat it. Yes, Nicodemus? You needn't be sarcastic about it. I wasn't being sarcastic. I merely Sometimes said... Sometimes the way you talk, you think I wasn't wanted around here. Nicodemus, you're too sensitive. All I said I was... know what you said. Well, let it pass. I came to report the batteries are fully charged. I think we ought to submerge for maybe four or five hours. Everything in working order? Would I be submerging if it wasn't? All right, all right. Don't fly off the handle. Go ahead and submerge. Thank you. That's very kind of you. <coughs> God, does he go around with a chip on his shoulder all the time? Oh, wonderful man, Nicodemus. Wonderful. Best man possible on a submarine. Just one little trouble with him. He's sensitive. Are we going to submerge? Yes, my boy. Last, you're going to have your great thrill. Here you can watch through this porthole over here as we go below the surface. Golly. Well, there's this signal now to stop the diesels and turn on the electric motors. Golly. Look, everybody. The water's coming up over the window. We're submerging. We're submerging. It's exciting, isn't it? Well, I've done it before, but it never fails to throw me. Now, we won't go far below the surface since there's no need for it. We merely want to change from diesel power to electric, that's all. Well, even so, just going below the surface is thrilling enough. We're under. Look. Everything's green. A sort of light green that's getting darker. Yes, the deeper we go, the darker it'll get, of course. Well, how long can we stay under, Leander? We'll parry the ordinary submarine running at from one to one and a half knots can remain below the surface for 30 hours. We can remain below in the Cameron multi-depth submarine in Bathysphere for 37 hours. Seems to me the government should be interested in a submarine like this. Oh, they are, Miss Lane. They've already made certain tests. What's that? I don't know. I can't imagine it. Well, it would appear there's trouble afoot. Should I stay underwater? Never mind how you say it. Come on. Golly. What could have happened? I don't know, Jim. I don't know. Nicodemus! Nicodemus! What has happened? I don't know, Doc. Something's gone wrong with the main ballast tanks. I can't close them. You can't close Wait, them? Wait, heavens, man. Doesn't that mean... It means we're going down. We're going down fast. There ain't a thing I can do about it. If there's something wrong with the motor, surely you can fix them. No, it's not the motor, Smith. Something's jammed inside the main ballast tank, which means we can't control the intake or the outlet of water. Golly! But you've got to do something, man. There's nothing I can do. Nothing nobody can do. Oh, golly. If only Superman were here now. What could he do? Well, he could take us back to the surface. He could... Holy mackerel. No, he couldn't. He'd be inside here with us. And to lift the submarine to the surface, he'd have to be on the outside. And how could he get out without letting the water in here? Exactly what I've been thinking myself. Helpless Superman in his guise of Clark Kent stands by with his friends while the submarine drops lower and lower through the ocean depths. Seemingly, there is nothing he can do, and yet, well, perhaps we can leave it to Superman to figure a way out. So be sure to be with us Monday and every day, Monday through Friday, same time, same station. Tune in and follow The Adventures of Superman. Superman is directed by George Lothar, and is a copyrighted feature appearing in Action Comics magazine. This is Mutual. <laughs>